Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Painkiller, the Battle Out of Hell expansion, this is 115 speaking. Now, you might be a bit confused as to why am I doing this video sync as we finish the entire Battle Out of Hell expansion, and you might be asking what to do next. Well, uh, the reason I am making this video is to answer that question exactly. For those of you who just didn't have enough of painkiller action, like me, there is still something to do. Now, if you remember, you can start the new game, the original one, and choose any of the difficulty modes and you know if you finish the game on daydream insomnia or nightmare uh, you will finish the fifth chapter and see the ending however if you finish the game on trauma difficulty you will finish the game on fourth chapter and see a bonus ending now there is just like in the original game in battle out of hell expansion if you finish the game on trauma difficulty there is a little bonus in the end which is the main reason i'm making this video to basically show you what it is However, in order to reach, to unlock the uh, trauma difficulty, we need to unlock 9 black tarot cards to activate this mode, as it says here. Now, <laughs> feels like it's been just a couple of days since we've seen this exact screen when I was recording the very first level of this expansion, but, you know, we've been through quite a huge journey. So let me just find a save here. Uh, if we just saw this by the date and time, there it is, the orphanage. Now. The moment we finished fighting King Alastor in the previous video, yeah, killing him at 350, close call, really, the game basically throws you back to the orphanage after the credits roll. You know, the first level of the expansion, and you can just play again, you know, simple. It also creates an auto save file for you, which is extremely handy because it creates a save as a starting point for you where, just take a look at this, you have a complete card collection. Now, I can't even tell you how amazing this feels. Every single one of these cards has some unique story behind it, and we've collected them all. I mean, the amount of stuff we went through to get these, it's amazing. And I myself, in real life, really love uh, <laughs> Magic the Gathering training card games, so I have kind of a weakness for card collecting, and uh, this game exploits exactly that. Uh, anyway, so we have complete card collection, and you might be asking yourself, well, Okay, um, what to do now? So, there are two things I want to show you. Uh, one, we can actually, with this complete card collection, revisit the original game of the painkiller. Uh, however, it's not as perfect as you might think. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that if you start, sign a new pact of the original game with your card collection, you know, not deleting your progress, of course, um, you will be thrown into card the short card collection menu, excluding all the expansion Black Terror cards. So you might be wondering, well, what's the point? Well, you can equip some of these cards, let's say, uh, the... Yeah, let's say the Health Stealer. I want to just basically equip cards that I can visually show you in effect. The Health Stealer and the 666 ML. Uh, along with that, let's say we want the Weapon Modifier, we want the scepter, so the enemies are weak. And let's say, uh, I don't actually want the demon morph for, for this particular example, it will get in the way of every other golden card. Uh, let's say magic gun and never waste any ammo, you know, simple. So, with these cards equipped, let me just return to the main menu, sign the pact, let's go to the original game, yes, we want to start a new game, no, we do not want to lose all our black turret cards and scores. And now, Let's, for example, pick the trauma difficulty. Okay, I skipped the cutscene there, we've seen it. And uh, if you just open your card collection here, that's it. The expansion cards are gone. However, those that you have equipped are still equipped, even if the interface doesn't show this. Moreover, what this means is that on top of having those cards equipped, you can actually equip additional ones. Now, let's just see. Um, in case of golden cards, well, let's say the time bonus, all of them will profit from this. And along with that, I don't know, let's confuse enemies. And uh, dexterity and weapon modifier is always fun. And seeing as this is trauma difficulty and we don't need, there will be no souls, let's just get the blessing active and uh, let's say greed, you know, double the amount of hidden wealth, for example. So with these cards equipped, let us start the cemetery level. <laughs> it still remembers all our old scores. This is actually pretty... I don't know, it just gives me watery eyes. Makes me very nostalgic. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, what was it? I think five years since the last time I was here. This is... Whew, overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. But first of all, as you can see, we have... Well, let's first pick up a weapon that has actual ammunition. But first, let me see about the gold. So, we have collected zero gold coins. And there it is. A gold coin has two point value, but doubled that, it has eight. So the greed card is in effect. Now, if you look at the shotgun, we have 666 ammunition for everything, even if the card uh, menu does not show this. And there it is. We just gain three points of health by killing one of these knights, because we are stealing their health using the Health Stealer expansion card. Now, let's see about the golden cards. Now, the enemies are confused, killing each other, and we also have a weapon modifier as you can tell by the glow of these weapons unfortunately I don't have more weapons to show you but the weapon modifier is active we are not wasting any ammo as you can see and the enemies are weak using the scepter they manage to kill each other off with one blow and that is on top of the dexterity the confusion and the time bonus card so this serves as a just a little demonstration that you can equip a couple of expansion cards and go back and revisit the original painkiller. So uh, if we just return to the map screen over here, this however means you can never ever unequip these cards, so make your choice very carefully in case for whatever reason you don't want to use them in any particular level of the original game, but by now you have already played through it, so honestly I just say enjoy it. And on top of that you can have all these beauties equipped. Now saying that Let's see what happens if we go back to the Battle Out of Hell expansion. So yes, we want to start a new game. No, we don't want to delete it. And now look at this. The trauma difficulty has unlocked because the game knows we have unlocked at least 9, in our case 10, Black Terrot cards from the expansion. So even if the screen, the card screen is not showing this, uh, there are, the game somehow remembers that we have them. now. <laughs> You might be wondering, wow, what happened here? Well, that's simply the glitch. The interface can't handle four silver cards being equipped. And you might be wondering, well, great, now I'm screwed. I lost my three golden cards. Well, no, you didn't. Let's just put everything back here. Leave the uh, card screen and go back. And as you can see, everything is in the order we originally put it into before leaving the expansion. So let's just put everything back. And there we are beautiful. So basically this is how you can revisit the original game and use some of your expansion cards on top of the vanilla cards. Of course this doesn't work with the original cards, you can only combine the expansion ones with the original ones. Now, saying that, um, I told you that there is a bonus level after we finish the entire expansion uh, on trauma difficulty. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now don't worry, I've already played through the entire game, I'm not gonna be recording this, I'm just gonna make Pay, uh, play this on my own personally to get there. Uh, however, the reason I'm still here is I probably just want to sort of think about which cards might be most beneficial for the journey of Battle Out of Hell expansion on trauma difficulty. So, uh, if we just think about it, there's the Demon Morph, you know, it will help us just get through everything easily. There is also the case of Rebirth, which will fully regenerate health and armor. I mean, just think about levels like Leningrad, so insanely difficult. But this time, we don't have to worry about souls. However, uh, we might be thinking about, let's see, uh, the armor regeneration combined with the health regeneration. Or oh, there's also the health stealer, which, as you have seen, can be pretty damn powerful. I mean, we leached two to three points of health from every single shotgun blast to those uh, knights in the cemetery level, just as I've shown you. So really, it's up to personal preference. I say on trauma difficulty where there is no way to gain health, health regeneration perhaps coupled with health stealer might be pretty damn powerful. But the, you might also consider health regeneration and armor regeneration to always keep these values at 75. That is also pretty damn amazing. Couple that with the rebirth, you will in many difficult encounters find yourself uh, uh, with uh, fully prepared. However, remember, Mercy still takes up one spot, and I'd say that is a priority here. So I think my personal choice would be the Health Stealer combined with Mercy. And by smartly using these three opportunities for Golden Cards, we could get something out of the Rebirth, 
it will not be useful for that particular scenario, but for the future scenarios after we finish fighting as a Demon Morph. Now for both Demon Morph and Rebirth, we don't really need the time bonus. That is a huge advantage, let me tell you. And yeah, with this in mind, considering we are just going to morph into a demon, the only way we can improve upon this is either with dexterity or speed. Um, I personally find dexterity to be more fun. So I think this is my loadout for the trauma difficulty of the Battle Out of Hell expansion. So really at this point you have worked hard to completely fill up your collection. As you can see me messing up, uh, messing with my cards have has really drained our treasury, our coffers. I only have over 6,000 gold coins now, but I don't mind, you know, it's worth showing you. And really, so at this point, just start playing the orphanage level, make it all the way to the Shadowland to fight with King Galastor again. As you can see, it still remembers our old scores. And yeah, when I'll do this, uh, I'll see you guys after that, because uh, the game should take you to the bonus level only accessible if you finish all this in trauma difficulty so wish me luck I'm gonna have a blast of a time and I hope you guys will too because this time we won't have to worry about secrets destructible objects uh, card unlocking statuses we're just gonna play this game however the hell we see fit so <laughs> I'll see you guys when I've made it and I'm back Finished playing through the entire game on Trauma Difficulty with the Black Terror card, hence that I showed you a while earlier. It was an amazing fun, I definitely recommend it. Uh, the reason I'm here in the map screen again and not in the bonus level I mentioned is that there is one last obstacle, and yes, that is once again King Galastor. We have to defeat the bastard in Shadowland all over again, this time on Trauma Difficulty. And the game will throw us directly into the bonus level after the final cutscenes and credits roll. So let's do just that. Uh, this time it should be much, much easier. First of all, no, we know what to do. Second of all, we have a better Black Turret card set. On the other hand, this is trauma difficulty. We are going to get obliterated in a matter of seconds if Alistair decides. So, yeah. Let's hope he will be more attracted to those stone golems instead and not waste our time oh my god this feeling of you know nearing to an end of a playthrough is quite irreplaceable now I use black tarot cards here just to make sure that fall will be safe but it doesn't really matter I just wanted to get safely to circles let's just actually stay here and as soon as the Demon Morph ends. Let's equip a grenade launcher. Or maybe... Okay, no, he kind of missed. That's actually really impressive. Anyway, we triggered one. Let's see what will happen, but let's, you know, as sort of a backup device, run to the other circle immediately. Yep, that didn't work, unfortunately. Okay, full health granted, thankfully. We trigger another circle and the golem over there is rebuilding himself. I suggest we pick up an armor and position ourselves to the falling circle over here. And if not this golem, hopefully the third one will do the trick. It really depends on how distracted Alastor will be. Oh dear. I don't think that golem really did... Oh yes, he stunned him. Now's our chance. <laughs> okay, so uh, as you see, this was much, much, much easier. And down he goes. Okay, so there we go. We have finished all the levels on trauma difficulty. Oh, look at the abyss. And now our reward is imminent. Burning hell. There. Very unique kind of loading screen with a painkiller style skull and a spine still attached. And we find ourselves on a stairway to, well, I don't think this is heaven, but it's definitely up in the clouds. Uh, some kind of castle, you know, held in the air by air balloons. <laughs> really interesting idea. And uh, 15 monks surrounding us, welcoming us to the monastery. Now, for the sake of completion, I'm just gonna do away with these bastards. 
as you can see, we had 666 health points when we started the level. The moment we kill one of these guys, it switches back to 250. I have no idea why that is the case. But considering we will be taking some damage, even with friendly enemies in this level, it might be a good idea not to hurt these monks. But yeah, I'm just going to do that for the sake of completion. Now let me just show you the statistics here. here yeah, card unlocking stuff is not available, but look, we have collected 332 gold. Now 200 is via the holy items, but look at the amount of coins inside these chests. Absolutely ridiculous. This is amazing. Very satisfying to collect them. <coughs> So yeah, gold is also a kind of reward for making it through the trauma difficulty for your further uh, card, black tarot card experimentation pleasures. Once we do away with even the gatekeeper over here, the cardinal or bishop, or what is he? No, more of a Vatican cardinal parody or something like that. Anyway, let's just gently touch him. Yeah, as you can see, all of these are extremely weak. They don't really have a full health. Uh, really, it's like they are the permanent effect of a scepter. We see something very interesting down there. Now, these are the red souls of the developers of the game. Kind of a little easter egg they put at the very end. Bart Sekura. That's a strange name. And our goal is basically to collect the souls of the developers that created the game. Uh, Michal Novak. That's very common. Um, there should be 23 souls, uh, sh looking at the arrow at the top of the screen you can see how many souls you've collected so far, so it's 2 and uh, 21 to go. Now this can be really tricky. Why? Well, as you can see, jumping there. Now this being trauma difficulty you cannot unfortunately save, so be very careful with those jumping pads, you don't want to be doing this all over again, you know, and it's uh, really annoying in that regard. Okay, okay, let me try and pronounce this. Krzysiek Edek Falinski. I did a good job there, yeah, I don't think I could have done any better, to be honest. And, um, really, so that's what this is, collect 23 developer souls to make it to the level exit that will then spawn. Now, there should be one on the wall over here, uh, Michael Kosieraczki, and on the roof over here, Actually, I didn't have to do it now since we'll be here later. Ah, uh, Marcin Cedin Czartinski. I think this is one of the two guys responsible for the amazing painkiller soundtrack, uh, the ambient music and the stuff like that. And uh, yeah, the other guy we'll find on top of that tower, I think, actually. Anyway, let's keep on going. I have a certain path in my mind, but I really am doing this in a very intuitive manner. That's just a fancy way of saying I have really no plan. Oh my god, this roof is going to be the end of me. You don't want to drop down from here. Thankfully, if you do drop and obliterate yourself, you can still, you know, keep collecting those souls for a 6 HP health boost. Pavel Vyoruskiewicz. Okay. The funny thing is, Polish language is actually very similar to Slovak, which is, Slovakia is where I am from. Wojciech Pazdu. The thing is, for a Slovak, Polish is so hilarious. It's like your own language, but twisted in a very funny way. Claudius Zschick. Okay. And I believe it's the same way uh, people from Poland perceive Slovak. It's just so much, such a source of entertainment. And this is the other guy responsible for the amazing soundtrack, Adam Skorpik Skorupa. One of the towers. Now let's just make a jump over here. For this very content looking guy, uh, Wojciech Madri. Okay, now using these high points, you can get a view and a sense of where the other souls are. It's really handy that way. Okay, let's just make it onto this tower over here. And let's drop from oh, this side. I actually, wasn't necessary at all. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, where we want to go now is back to the entrance to the castle because we want to jump on top of one of these towers. They hold souls, as you have probably noticed. Okay, unfortunately, oh, this guy is Tomek Strażkowski or something like that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately we cannot make a jump to the other tower, we'll have to drop from the top again. So let's just use this opportunity to see if there's something on this part of the wall. Yes, good, there is a solitary soul belonging to Christian Gakai. 
So that one, then another one. This one is for Kamil Loki Bilchanski. Okay. And I believe, yeah, another one around the corner over here. This one is for Maciej Kuciara or Kuciara. Hard to say, really. I'm not sure in Polish when to which how to say the particular letters really it's it's very tricky I understand some solitary words of Polish but no I'm not a Polish speaker or anything like that okay now when we climb up on top of this tower that we've seen from the distance uh, this is my god he looks I'm not sure if excited or just afraid uh, Sebastian Voldansky I am the angels only prayer wow that's that's really um, deep uh, anyway we have 15 souls that means there are eight more to collect now where we haven't been is the very outer courtyard yet that's where I'm trying to get us safely ideally of course fortunately that is not as easy as walking to the entrance ouch but yeah we, we have the luxury of taking some damage and I forgot about you god damn it okay anyway Let's just jump down. This is well. We are underneath the entrance, and there is Michal Trepka with um, targets painted on his nipples. That's um, that's exactly the kind of thing we wanted to see. And if we go to the left over here, there should be Marek Gala. He looks blissfully happy for no apparent reason. And then there is Michal Sadowski. <laughs> looks like a funny guy. Okay, and I believe that's it for this uh, very outer courtyard, nothing on this side. We can just climb the ladder over here. And there are five more souls we need to collect. Good. Okay, now let's use this tower to make it up. Now we'll have to jump once again into the inner courtyard. Okay. But we cannot just go around the walls, the towers are placed in such a way that they block our path, we have to use the jumping pad over here. Actually, we can also use the jumping pad to jump straight onto the ladder. The ladder itself being actually actually kind of difficult to use, it seems like only the right part of that ladder is truly climbable. Anyways, um, where I'm going now is there, again above the entrance to the castle. And that is the other tower, with another soul to be collected. And this one belongs to Robert Zgon, something like a hunt, I think, or chase. Uh, it means uh, Wilinski and Andrew Poznanski. Okay, Poznan, I think, is actually a town in Poland. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, and finally, let's make it all the way up again. We are missing three souls, which is great because thankfully I know exactly where they are. They are at the very top. This means I have missed nothing. Great, I'm proud of myself. Because the placements are kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, so there was a hidden ladder here, and this is the most powerful jumping pad. Let's be ooh, very careful and get on top to see the devil. Adrian Chmielaj himself. <laughs> oh, this is a great picture. I think the best here so far. Um, this is, I think, the guy that was in the interview in one of the making of videos that are bonus for the Black Edition. Actually, I think I'm going to record those videos and uh, upload them as extras on my channel, yeah. And I'll include them in both playlists, Battle Out of Hell Expansion and the original. And... Slavic Pelatos or Latos, I'm not entirely sure. And let's just go collect the very final one, belonging to Bartek Sokolowski, the disco guy. Wow, look at all that fabulousness behind him. And as you may have heard, the very familiar chant, the level exit has appeared. Now the arrow on top of the screen is actually pointing us on the direction, so let's drop from a roof to roof to wall and to the roof. And I 
think I got stuck. So these are the many dangers of this bonus level. Yeah. What this basically means <laughs> is I'll have to defeat Alistor again, collect all these souls all over again, and hopefully reach this point in a... Oh dear, more reliable way. Yeah, this being a trauma difficulty we cannot save a load and I cannot even force a checkpoint restart and this level also provides no auto save features. So browsing a menu will not help us at all. Okay guys, I will see you at this exact spot in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back and the disco guy, Bartek Sokolowski. So please just give me another chance at this, I'm sure we'll manage to drop down without Daniel's S getting stuck on that panel. Ah, Martin, this is all your fault. Anyway, let's step through the portal and see what happens. Yeah, it's rather unimpressive to collect everything in this level, but there you have it. Ah. And we're back at the main menu, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't get uh, any better than this. Uh, this was basically just kind of a nice easter egg from the developers. Kind of a thank you for playing it on the trauma difficulty, which due to the difficulty lock uh, implies you played it for the second time. And from here on, really, you can just return to the map screen and, you know, check your statistics, uh, relive some of your glory days, try to beat some scores, and really just have fun messing with your Black Turret card collection while switching in between the campaigns, all the good stuff, now that you don't have to worry about Golden Stars or Black Turret cards, or maybe you didn't worry about that before anyway. Uh, either way, I really hope you found both Let's Plays helpful. I try to give you as much of a holistic package as, as possible. Uh, I will still probably, yeah, I'll record and upload the bonus material material within the video section and probably include it uh, to both playlists, that is the original Painkiller and also the Battle Out of Hell expansion because both are part of the Black Edition Extras package. As for the future Painkiller installments, I am considering doing a Let's Play like this for Painkiller Overdose. The reason is that I consider Overdose to be a really good Painkiller game. It wasn't made by People Can Fly, but by Mindware from Czech Republic. Uh, very creative levels, enemies, weapons, and whew, an enormously tough difficulty. So that's kind of what I consider intimidating, because I'm not really good at first-person shooters myself. But we'll see. So anyway, yeah, I'm still considering that. Uh, I have currently been working on a Broken Sword walkthrough for 10 months, actually, since September last year till now. Finished that, and now I will be working on Tomb Raider 3 Let's Play. So yeah, in the future I'm considering the Painkiller Overdose Let's Play as well. We'll see what the future holds. Anyway, this is all from my side. Thank you for being with me on this amazing journey. I mean, phew, Painkiller, that's... Yeah, I, I really have not much more to say about it. I think I've said it all over the course of these videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.